Sounds good. All right, well, go ahead and press record. All right. Hi, everybody. We are here with Megan Abbott today. She is the owner and president of Megan Abbott Trainer, and we, she's the next guest on our holistic practitioner series where we're getting to know the different, uh, the different personalities and different nuances, if you will, behind, behind the holistic practitioner, that we're not all just clumped together under one thing we actually have a lot of individual reasons for serving and ways of getting to where we're at so megan uh thanks for being here and you are a personal trainer is that correct but you had other things that you did could you go into those um a little bit more for us how those all come together for you yeah, well, first off, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and be able to share. Um, so yeah, I'm a certified personal trainer. That's kind of how I started everything. Um, so I'm a certified personal trainer. Um, I've done a ton of group exercise as well, and I have several certifications under that realm um, that I don't really use now, but I am a nutritional therapy practitioner, which um, I'm a, basically a holistic nutritionist. So we really look at the whole body, how everything works together, food first approach, but we dig pretty deep. And then I'm also a Reiki practitioner. Awesome. So how does the Reiki connect? Does the Reiki connect with the personal training in your service? Yeah. So I, I'm a newly certified Reiki practitioner, but I have been doing energy work for a long time and energy work was a large piece of my healing journey. Um, so I'm a personal trainer, but my main focus is really on chronic pain and chronic conditions like autoimmune conditions and helping people resolve those, reduce symptoms, reduce pain levels, put things into remission. And for me, I went, when I originally got an injury, I was in a car accident, had chronic lower back pain, excruciating, severely affected my entire life, personally and professionally, relationships. And I went the traditional Western medicine route for almost two years and it, it didn't do anything for me. And I still had this pain and I was in amazing shape. I was in the best shape of my life going into this. It was a very minor car accident. And it wasn't until I went into more of this holistic side, combining movement and perfecting movement patterns and strengthening those movement patterns and then working on nutrition and figuring out what my body was reacting to and autoimmune issues and inflammatory issues and gut health and um, detoxification issues and then getting into a lot of trauma and emotions that I was holding on to and releasing that through energy work. And so my goal is to really kind of combine all of those that were so well for me together, but took me a really long time to find and be able to help people kind of put that together and do it faster so they don't have to suffer. Wow. So this accident and so people have a clear, like, cause I'm sure a lot of people can relate, you know, they have something happen that's traumatic. They go to their doctor. What does that path look like as far as the western medicine goes what was the what was the what was given what was the method if you want to share what was the method that was given to you what was the map the path there yeah and it's and i hear this from clients all the time so my path is certainly very relatable to most people so you know primary care doctor emergency room um given anti-inflammatories x-ray chiropractor orthopedic doctor, physical therapy. I ended up going and seeing eight different physical therapists over about a, that two year period. And just, I didn't, it didn't do anything for me. And it was a great, great practitioners, just not great in the realm of chronic issues necessarily. Um, and then I saw a spine, spine and pain specialist, and I've had nine outpatient procedures done on my back and injections and, you know, burning off nerve endings and that didn't do anything. And then I developed, you know, a bursitis in my hip and it was another injection and more medications. And, you know, I got to the point with kind of on that Western medicine side where they're like, all right, well, we can't do anything else for you. So your option are pain meds or just deal with it. 
and I have addiction runs in my family. And so pain meds were not, I did not want to go down that route, you know, as a just in case. And I, I just thought there had to be a better way. And I tried, I mean, all kinds of things, chiropractor, dry needling, cupping, scraping, massage therapy, flotation therapy, cryotherapy, acupuncture. I mean, all the things that I could think of that, you know, some of them provided some relief, but nothing fixed it. And, and I couldn't do, you know, I love strength training. Strength training was so important for my mental health and I couldn't do it. And I, you know, my mental health took a huge toll and I just was not in a great place. And, you know, now I'm at a point where I've, I've never been happier and I can strength train and squat and deadlift more with my body weight again. And, you know, I feel great. I don't have this pain and just the Western medicine route wasn't wasn't ideal. And I just, I see that so often across the board with these chronic issues. Wow. I mean, first of all, that's a really powerful testimonial. And I mean, you should be so proud of yourself that you're really at this level. So where, where was it for you when you were really able to start putting it together again? Like what were the first tools you put in place? Cause I know for a lot of people, it's like, I don't even know where to start. How did you start? What was your start place? So I started with what I knew best, which was movement. And, you know, I, all these physical therapists had looked at my back and my hips and my glutes to some extent. And, and I was just like, they're, they haven't done anything. Like nothing is fixed. I get some temporary relief for like a day or two, but then the pain comes right back. So I was like, well, what if I really look at my movement patterns and I, you know, I, I got additional certifications and did a ton of my own research and was just like, let me see if I can perfect my movement patterns. And for me, I had, for someone who was in great shape, I had some very poor movement patterns starting at my feet and my ankles and, and my hips, you know, didn't move in, in great directions that no physical therapist had ever looked at. And even up through, you know, my mid back into my upper back. And just, I, I started from there and just doing very little things, you know, five, 10 minutes a day of little things, because that's all I could handle at that time. And slowly working my way up into where I could do, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of some very gentle exercises and body weight and a lot of single, single body unilateral type movements that I slowly got a little bit stronger. And, you know, when I was able to finally do bilateral or both sides of my body, you know, squats and deadlifts and get strong again, that's when the pain went away. But it was a really slow process to work up into that. And that's what I see across the board is a, a lot of this Western medicine approaches, you know, it's all band-aid, 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 and it's not, let's really look at how, it, how your whole body is moving, get it moving better, and then get it really strong and hold that position. Love that. So tell us about what you are, how are you serving people now? Are you in a clinical practice? Are you working in a collaborative with other practitioners? Like what is the structure that you took for your business? I work in a lot of ways. I, I definitely don't just have what I'm, I'm multi, very multifunctional. So I work out of a personal training studio doing more in-person work and that can and include all three of the things that I do. It can include just the personal training, just the nutrition, um, like I said, or all three. I do a lot of online work. So I have a program called Path to Pain-Free Living, which is a three-month program that really gives people a solid foundation of getting out of pain, reducing symptoms. It is, you know, movement-based and also nutrition-based, you know, working on some of the fundamentals, but it's really about habits and lifestyle and finding a way to you know, implement a lot of these things that are going to be really helpful, but do in a way that's going to be able to implement and keep up long-term. So it's not, it's not like a fad diet where it's, you know, oh, we're just going to do this for three months and then we're done. It's, it's really building lifestyle changes so that people can get better and feel better and stay better long-term. Cause that's really the goal is, is to get out of pain and feel better, but also feel better forever. Um, so the, I'd say in person and kind of this online program are the two main ways that I work with clients. Okay, great. And so, 
Um, I can imagine that you can like in that 90 days do some of the same things that you did for yourself with the like assessment of how much movement is where it's happening and how to gradually build more movement into their lives. Definitely. We, everyone gets a full assessment that I do. I get eyes on everyone and test their movement patterns. And we talk about their nutrition and, you know, through just talking to people, whether it's the assessment or check-ins, a lot of things come out as far as habits, limiting beliefs, emotional struggles, and it's, it's working through all of them because it, it is really, everything plays a part and, and the, you know, I mostly work with women, but I also do work with men and, and things that really come up. It's most of these people have trauma. I mean, we all have trauma, but these people tend, tend to have more trauma in their lives and it's providing a safe space for people to talk about that. And when you have pain and you live in pain for a long time, you bottle up all of these emotions and feelings because you don't want to burn other people around you. And so you end up just not talking to anyone and you just store all of this in your body. And that plays a huge effect in, in staying in pain and having this pain and, and being able to just open up and talk about it and feel. And then as we're working on the movement piece and the nutrition piece and these lifestyle changes, it's, it all plays such a big role in, in healing. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And it's great that you are able to provide that kind of outlet. So I imagine that you have some type of then social component to your program, some kind of way to talk to them. You know, how, how does that look? Yeah. So I have for my online clients, it's check-ins. I'm always available via email as well. And then for my in-person clients, you know, they get an hour with me at least sometimes it's a couple hours, depending on, you know, how they want to work with me, but it's, it's an hour of open space. And it's, I'm not a, not kind of the, I, as a personal trainer, people get, oh, you just yell at people all the time. I'm like, I don't know if I've yelled at anyone in many, many, many years. It's, it's a lot of, talking and, and working through things and how, how's your week been and how's your sleep been? How's your pain? What's, what else has been going on? And I get to know my clients very, very, very well. And the goal is really to create that open space. And I try and make sure I'm an open book so that I am, they understand where I'm coming from. And, you know, I have a long trauma history too, and it was just hard to, to work through and, but it, I came out better on the other side and I see people coming out better on the other side. So that the open piece of the relationship is really important, really valuable. And I, I try and make myself as available as possible to everyone. So your outcome, you know, took a little bit longer than 90 days. So what do you think the out, what are the outcomes been for your 90 day people? Are they, um, you said a foundation. So are they set to then be launched into an even larger program with you? Is it something else that you can potentially see them fitting into? Yeah, it's a, it kind of depends. So some people, I usually do a six, six month kind of lower key program after that because they've built such a good foundation, but it kind of depends on the person. You know, I, I get a lot of people who are in pain and then also want to lose weight. So, you know, that, that first three months is really fixing movement patterns, building that solid foundation, nutritional changes, lifestyle changes. And, and a lot of times we're in a pretty good place after those three months where we're building off of that, where maybe we can focus a little bit more on the weight loss and feeling better, or, you know, I have an option to go even deeper if they feel like, you know, I still have a lot of these issues. I feel like I need to go even deeper. You know, that's an option too. It kind of depends on the person and what they need, but I like to make it as open and available as possible with different options, depending on what they need at that point, because everyone's a little bit different. Yeah. Well, it's great that you at least have something else that you can then um, help people shift into if they are not yet ready to finish the work with you or need the work to continue or have new changes. Like you said, secondary things that are going on. Cause I think that's how it is. It's like, sometimes people um, have, larger health issues they have to deal with, but they have to first get to that first step, which is to move better. So mm -hmm. awesome. So do you have um, any challenges going on right now with business? Like what are your current goals, things that you, um, you're trying to do, trying to help, help shift into? 
Yeah, for me, it's so my background. So my career before this, I was in outside sales um, and I was a business owner for several years before this as well, um, before getting into personal training and then fitness management for, for five, five years or so. So I feel very confident in talking to people, connecting with people and the process thereafter. For me, it's always a marketing issue. I, especially in this, the fitness and health space, there's a lot of gimmicks and ways to market that I, I struggle with. And so a lot of that is, you know, wanting to represent me and my authentic self and this this different approach to health and wellness and targeting a six, a very specific demographic, which is also very broad because so many people have pain or autoimmune conditions or these chronic issues that it's it, for me, it's always a marketing and getting in leads and connecting with people up front because I have such a hard time being not being, I don't want to say salesy, but like that marketing aspect of, how most people attract people into the marketing. It's not, hey, lose 20 pounds in 30 days, you know, kind of like, oh, that sounds so cool. It's like, nah, it's like three months. You're going to feel really good after that, but you're not going to lose 20 pounds, but you can get out of pain if you put in the work. I'm going to give you all the tools and resources. It's just not as sexy. Well, it's really good messaging though. <laughs> it, it is great messaging, but... <laughs> getting that message to the right people. That's just, it's just not as sexy. Yeah. So what is that right people? Who are the right people that you think um, would appreciate that message? It's, it's most people over the age of 30, to be honest, you know, <laughs> I <modern>. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it wants to, more realistic, you know? Yeah. Like people who are really grounded in their actual goals, people who really need that change. Exactly. And once, you know, I assume, and I'm, I'm also over 30, so I feel very comfortable, you know, saying the over 30 mark, it's, you know, once you hit 30, you've, you've gone through your twenties and you're probably at a point where you're in a job, you've maybe, you maybe have a family at this point and your life has just changed. Your lifestyle has changed and it usually changes to more sedentary, you're busier, or you're probably not doing, you know, the same activity levels, you know, we have some changes in hormones and different things, then we can't we begin to accept <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> things that you don't want to, <laughs> you know, we do need eight hours of sleep, you know, five isn't great. All nighters aren't great for us anymore. So it's, yeah, it's getting back to a lot of these basics that fuel our health and, and fuel health and wellness and us feeling good that we've probably gotten out of at some point now that we're over the age of 30. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's a good juicy place to tap into for sure. I think a lot of people uh, would feel those emotional reasons why and really, really come to heart with that and definitely want to, uh, to try something out to be more successful at what they're probably already wanting to do, but weren't as successful doing on their own. So convincing them that they need that um, that point, that, that place where they have that support and something in place to help them achieve that goal. So exactly. um, really cool stuff there. So what is, um, do you have anything that you're trying to grow into any plans or things that you would like to see this business go to that's beyond just the taking a second, just beyond the fulfillment of your happy clients, but going to a place where you have everything you really ideally need from your business. What would that look like for you? So I think from a business standpoint, I have, there's a lot of things I'd like to do. Um, and it's just me right now. So there's, I, I feel a lot of time constraints and, you know, energy management constraints. Um, so podcasting is one thing I a hundred percent would love to get into. I love to talk. I love to talk to other people. I love sharing people's stories. So podcasting is, is on my short horizon, but you know, as some other things have to fall into place before that, um, you know, I'd love to build a program so that people can do this on their own and it would be more accessible to more people. I would also, you know, thinking about like certifying other coaches and a lot of what I do, because it is a very different approach. And I think 
when, when other people could do this, you know, obviously you can reach more people and help more people. And it's, it's so needed and it's only going to become more needed as more people are spending time on computers and their phones and we're having more aches and pains and more and more sedentary. So th those are kind of the things that from a business perspective, you know, I would love to do sometime in the future. Yeah, I can totally see you doing that. I mean, I think that, I mean, you could do podcasts now. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a great growth strategy, you know, um, mm -hmm. maybe like at the beginning of the month, you can find one or two, you know, and apply to one or two a month. And then maybe you get one of those and you're doing one every other month. So it's a, it's a great strategy for um, getting out your, your message to that larger audience, especially if you have something already online for them to come back to and to um, get started with no matter where they are in the world. So um, yeah, and yeah, I could totally see this, um, the outsourcing thing and bringing on other coaches. And what would that do for you? You know, if you had more coaches in place teaching the way that you've trained them to teach, you know, what will you then get to do? Yeah, at that point, you know, I, I think it would allow me to, to grow. I mean, scale the business is a big thing, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with people. It's, it's, I only have a certain number of hours in the day and, you know, I, I love to travel and that's not something I get to do a whole lot right now for, for that reason. And also where we are right now, uh, you know, travel still a little limited, but, you know, I would love to travel and, um, it, I love energy work and I would really love the time to be able to continue that process and um, have more time to connect into that. And so having the more time to do that would be great. Um, we're also uh, getting a dog in, in the next month or so and being able to, you know, do fun things with the dog and, and take days off, you know, randomly and, and do cool trips and go to a river, you know, something just, I really love to be outside and travel and, and do things. And that's ultimately, I would love the, the time and space to be able to do that. Well, I think that you can, so there's lots of, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, not for the brevity of time and everything, like it could be like a look at, you know, the packaging and the, how, how the customers are coming in and how, um, how the tickets are going and the number of tickets and things like that. But um, it does sound like you're really on your way to creating that like really strong signature offer and potentially that longer term offer too, so that um, you can have something a little bit more like predictable and you can kind of lay back a little bit, but still, you know, focus really intent intentionally when you want to show up, which is a big deal. Um, yeah, and maybe a book or two or something, right? Something because you were very yeah. story as well with lots of um, personal. I really felt touched by your personal story, how you opened up today. Um, and I kind of could see you, you know, like I has really strong picture in my head uh, visually of who you were as you were experiencing this like this moment of like being told by doctors, hey, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. I, I, and they have given you this ultimatum of, well, this is what we have for you. And you saying, you know what? No, I'm going to find something else and really being with yourself to take that next step. I really think that's a lot of courage. So I know that you're bringing all that courage and wisdom to your clients. So that's a really special story. Do you feel the same way about that? I do. Yeah. I, and my like long version story is, is quite, quite powerful and long. And I, I definitely could see a book and, um, it, you know, the trauma, I experienced a lot of childhood trauma and I think more trauma knowledge and application and healing trauma is becoming more and more prevalent now and talked about. And, and it's, so important, especially as autoimmunity goes up and pain goes up, there's almost always this trauma piece of it. And so I think, you know, I, one of the things I love is being able to share my story and the, and the trauma that I've experienced, um, in, in all kinds of aspects. And, and yeah, I think a book would be great. I have lots and lots and lots of stories somewhere, somewhere pretty crazy, pretty funny, but also, you know, very overcoming of 
where I started versus where I am now. <laughs> I mean, you, you're helping people who are, you know, our age and older, like people who are already experienced that are heavy in that. But what if you had a preventative onset tool to help people from this ever happening again, right? Like what if, Definitely. what if we could help solve the issue because it would no longer be an issue going forward if we didn't experience these trauma feedback loops or these situations of trauma in our childhood, right? Well, we can't prevent accidents, obviously. We still have to deal with this. So we're still gonna require care and, and treatment, intervention treatment. But you know, the, the case study of helping people learn from um, how we pick the pieces up again is such a strong emotional um, connection. And I think that that would be, it would serve so well, I think, for people to, to know that as much as possible. When it work, when it comes to why they would choose you um, over a different pro- product or, or solution, definitely. Um, so much for coming on today, Megan. It's a pleasure meeting you. I love doing these because I get to hear so many details that you wouldn't get if you're just reading a landing page or reading a Facebook post or even talking to someone unless they've worked with you, because that's always the best is hearing <laughs> first the ad account what people have experienced, but um, really getting to hear the story. So thanks again for coming on today. Well, thanks so much. I enjoyed it.